Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, their locations and drops inside of the Southern Barrens. If you haven't watched part 1, I'd highly recommend you do so. It covers the Northern Barrens, anything north of what I call Mancrix line. There's a lot of rares in the Barrens, so I couldn't all stick it all in one video. I do apologise if this video comes out a little bit late. My intention was to get it done before BlizzCon, however I have a full time job and then I do freelance work in the evenings and weekends anyway, so... Um, I just kind of try and do these videos whenever I can and I've had a particularly busy week. So anyway, let's jump right in and check out the rares. Geopriest, Gookrock. So up first we have Geopriest Gookrock, a level 19 Quillball that hangs around in the southern portion of Agamagore. He's quite easy to make out, he's the only Quillball in the area that has this skin that he has, and he's not that difficult to kill, you can kind of pull him away from ads and things like that. If you kill him, he has a 25% chance to drop the Gnarled Hermit Staff, which is an incredibly good Spirit Staff, so Priests, um, excellent use out of this, also possibly some Druids as well, so overall pretty damn good. Just a quick note, the important letter is a thing that might drop off a few mobs in this video. It's not actually in Classic WoW, it's something that was being tested on the PTR, so you can safely ignore it. Silithid Harvester Up next we have the Silithid Harvester, a level 24 elite that hangs around in the Field of Giants. You'll notice the Silithid Harvester looks a lot different from the other models in the area so it's pretty easy to pick out and it does, well its respawn rate is quite quick so you can probably expect it to respawn every 4 hours or so. If you kill it as a Horde player you will actually have a 100% chance to get the Harvested Head which is an item that starts a quest. On Alliance here it does not seem to drop so it seems to be a Horde only drop for you. Nevertheless, it is a pretty decent quest with some pretty decent XP. No other unique drops or anything like that, though, I'm afraid. Thunderstomp Up next, we have Thunderstomp, a level 24 rare Kodo that hangs around just north of Belmadan. Thunderstomp is not an elite, fortunately, um, and it doesn't really have any particularly special loot about him either. Although you aren't guaranteed a green, so if he is around there, I would definitely recommend killing him. His close proximity to the road, though, probably means it's going to be dead most of the time. You're probably going to have to get pretty lucky to find this guy, as I believe his respawn timer is reasonably long as well. But nevertheless, if you do see him, kill him and grab your green. Hegin Stone Whisker. Up next we have Higgin Stonewhisker, a level 24 rare that hangs around on the construction platform just above Belmadan dig site. Just a note, because this guy is a dwarf, as alliance you cannot kill him, they are all friendly to you, so this is a horde only creature. Kill him and you have a 20% chance to get the Sword of the Night Sky, a pretty cool purple sword and nothing more aside from that. It's a really nice sword though, I think this would sell pretty decently on the auction house, so why not give it a shot. Digger Flameforge Up next we have Digger Flameforge, another 24 rare dwarf that hangs around inside the Belmadan pit. This guy can be pretty tricky as he's normally got two or three adds around him and what I really like about this guy is he also throws dynamite at you as well which I think is really funny. But yeah he can be a little tricky and most often he's dead as well because he's quite a popular area for horde questers. If you can kill him however he has a 25% chance to drop the brimstone belt which is a very nice cloth belt. If you don't get the brimstone belt you're going to get a green instead. Azir the Skyblade Up next we have Azir the Skyblade, a level 25 Cloud Serpent that hangs around just south of Camp Tarajo. Azir the Skyblade is more than likely going to be dead most of the time as the Southern Barrens is actually just a really popular zone in general and there's quite a lot of rares to be packed in a really small space so I, yeah if he is dead he's dead you know it's just one of those. If you can get him though good news for you he has a guaranteed chance to drop a green so all good on that front. Uh, I would watch out he primarily casts fireballs and like a fire pillar sort of spell so uh, he can do a fair bit of damage with it. It, but yeah, 
So you're going to get a green if you kill this guy. Definitely worth checking out. Malgin Barley Brew. Up next we have a really fun little rare here in the form of Malgin Barley Brew, a level 25 dwarf who is in Beldon Keep and is Beldon Keep's morale officer. As the morale officer his job is to make sure that the dwarves have plenty of beverages and his loot reflects that quite funnily. Tons of different types of alcoholic beverage as well as a slightly increased chance to drop greens. He's a very fun rare to kill. If he's in here anyway the alcohol's worth a bit to a vendor so it's worth getting him just for the money. Hag Torrenbane. Up next we have Hagtorenbane, a level 26 elite quill ball that hangs around in the southern part of Blackthorn Ridge. This guy is really difficult to actually kill because of the amount of quill ball stalkers that hang around in the area, lots of stealth mobs patrolling and things like that. I would take a couple of friends with you if you're going to kill him at least because not only is he a 26 elite, it hits really really hard, it has a lot of defensive abilities as well to reduce the damage he takes and on top of that if you're going to try and kite them around you need to clear the whole area in advance so it can be a bit of a pain in the arse. More to the point as well, the area is very popular because there's a couple of Quillbore quests down here, so don't be surprised if he's already dead. And he doesn't actually have anything unique, he only has a guaranteed chance to drop a green, which is not bad in itself, but obviously it would be nice to get something a bit more unique considering this guy's difficulty. Brontus Up next we have Brontus, a level 27 elite that's just south of the Field of Giants. Brontus himself doesn't actually do a crazy amount of damage but he has a lot of health and as a Kodo he's pretty easy to pick out. So you shouldn't have too much difficulty finding him, he looks a little bit different from the others, he looks a lot more aged, a lot more older, things like that, a lot more sadder some might say. So maybe don't kill him because he's an old man but yeah, he's got quite a lot of health so if you can uh, slowly burn him down or you've got the sustainability go for it. But like I said, he doesn't really do too much damage, so you might be fine. As for Lou, he's not really worth killing either. He's only got a guaranteed chance to drop a green, no unique Lou. You know, if you don't need to kill him, I wouldn't bother. Captain Gerog Hamato. Our last rare in the Southern Barrens is Captain Gerog Hamato, a level 27 elite dwarf that hangs around inside of Beldon Keep. He's in the room on the other side from Malgin Barley Brew, so it's really easy to tell which one's which. He's normally in the left room, this guy. He's normally got quite a few ads around him as well, and he hits fairly hard. You'll see on my shaman here I'm taking a fair bit of damage and I'm a level 60 so he will hit you really hard if you're lower level. Definitely take a couple of friends with you. That being said, is it really worth going and killing this guy? I probably wouldn't say it's worth the trouble. He has a chance, well he has a guaranteed chance to drop a green, um, but aside from that no unique loot from this guy. I'd probably only kill him if he was in the way. So down below this guy there is, um, you have to go down for a quest that I'm just going to quickly mention at the end for the tier of the moon. Aside from that, no other reason to really go over this way. If he's there, kill him. If he isn't, well you know, you're not really missing out on the much. So just before I go I want to show you a horde quest that is quite often overlooked. There is a guy just down here right above the dig site called Feagley the Exiled and he can give you a quest to go in to Beldon Keep and retrieve an item for him. The item is actually guarded by General Twinbraid right at the bottom. The quest is definitely worth doing as you get a lot of money. I'd take a couple of friends with you though. So I'm just showing you the location here. General Twinblade, a bunch of ads are guarding the iron chest here in the centre of the room. You basically just have to kill them all, get the item and give it back to Feagley. So that about sums up the Barons part 1 and 2, I hope you've enjoyed this zone, I've enjoyed it very much, there's some really cool unique items in there and some really interesting bits of lore and things like that that kind of hook into the rares. If you enjoyed the video please do leave me a comment and let me know, I always enjoy reading them and if you want more videos like this in the future please do subscribe to the channel.